Hi, this is Dr. Meena, Head Department of Commerce from Petition College of Arts and Science, Chennai. Based on the request from final years of commerce students, I uploaded this video. From this video, you all come to know how to prepare contract account and balance sheet under contract costing. First of all, I explain the terms relating to contract costing. What is contract costing? It is one of the variations of specific order costing which applies where work is undertaken to customer special requirements and each order is of long duration. It is employed to ascertain cost and profit of specific contracts undertaken, for example, construction of buildings, dams, roads, ships, and plants, etc. What is work certified as per contract costing? Under contract work, work has to be certified by the contract is expert, uh, like uh, is architect, on the basis of physical progress of work is called work certified. Then what is work uncertified? This is work done, but not it certified by the contract is expert. That is work uncertified. Then we'll move on to the concept. What is retention money as per contract costing? Generally, full value of the work certified is not paid by the contractee unless the contract is completed. The contractee pays only 70 to 80 percentage of the work certified and the balance of the work certified is kept as provision as like security to make the contractor to complete the work. Next, we'll move on to the format for incomplete contract account, which have debit and credit side. On your debit side of the contract account, we need to debit all the expenses, whatever we are going to incur for carrying out the contract account. Like the first thing I mentioned over here on the particulars of debit side, the material, whatever we are going to utilize for carrying out the contract account, that will be occupied on the debit side of the contract account. Next, whatever expenses that we are going to incur for carrying out the contract, like wages, we are going to give it to the laborers, one who is going to carry out the contract account. And then expenses like establishment expenses, any direct expenses, or when you are going to install the plant for on higher basis, means what is the hiring charges, a general overheads. So I can uh, tell you, whatever expenses that we are going to incur for carrying out the contract account that need to be debited. On the credit side, the first thing I mentioned over is work in progress. Under incomplete contract account only, we have these terms that is work certified and work uncertified. Both these items will be shown under the heading work in progress for the incomplete contract account and we need to show any unused materials or materials returned to stores or to the suppliers or any materials sold must be shown on the credit side uh, by the by the meaning behind this if we are not going to utilize the materials for the contract purpose means that is to be shown on the credit side whatever only we are using for carrying out the contract account that only will occupy on the debit side likewise in case if you installed a plan for carrying out the contract account worth is ten thousand that i will show on the debit side to plant install ten thousand and at the end of the contract account we need to show what is the value of the plant at the end so how to calculate the value of the plant at the end means the credit side by closing plant under this plant issued. Plant issued here, it, you need to show the value of the plant that we showed on the debit side. I repeat the plant issued value under the closing plant I mentioned over here. That is the value I showed on the debit side. And this amount has to be compared with the last, that is plant last or any plant returned and get the value of the closing plan before depreciation. So we need to say, for example, the original value of the plant issued to the contract work is 10,000. So plant issued 10,000 minus plant lost is 1,000 
minus return on plant for example one more thousand so eight thousand is the plant at the end on this ten percent depreciation means eight thousand minus depreciation eight hundred outer column i can show seven thousand two hundred the thing is we need to calculate the value of the plant at the end after the contract work and then consider the depreciation on the value of the plant at the end and then finally what is the value of the plant after the depreciation that is on the credit side then what is the closing material that we need to show on the credit side then get the total on the to debit side as well as credit side you will come to know which side is more in case the credit side is more means you are getting profit i mentioned the profit as in the name of two notional profit that is balancing figure okay so always whatever profit we are getting under incomplete contract must be mentioned as notional profit in case the debit side is more means that there is a loss so credits are either one only come either national notional profit or notional loss so if credit side is more means notional profit if debit side is more means notional loss okay so we will end up the incomplete contract account in this way and in case if you have a notional profit means the entire notional profit will not carry to the pnl account to some extent it will one carry to pnl account to some extent that will be appropriate for reserve for facing the contingencies in future so what is the rule behind this for appropriating some amount for reserve and some amount to be transferred to pnl account there are three golden rules look at that in the slide how we are going to calculate the amount of profit transferred to pnl account there are three golden rules look at the first rule when work certified is less than 25% the contract price okay for example in the previous slide i told you notional profit the notional profit you got it as 10000 for example 10000 means that entire 10000 will not ca uh, carry to the pnl account to some extent will appropriate some amount to the reserve and how to calculate which amount is going to reserve which amount is going to pnl account for that we need to apply this three rules for applying this golden rules we need to compare the work certified along with our contract price always assume the contract price as 100 percentage say for example your contract price is 10 lakhs work certified is 8 lakhs so i can assume the contract price 10 lakhs as 100 percentage work certified 8 lakhs means what is the percentage 80 percentage so i can apply the third rule because the work certified is above the 50 percentage so likewise i need to compare the work certified with the contract price what is the percentage again i am reminding you how the contract price is always 100 percentage and calculate yourself what is the percentage on the contract price you have work certified so when work certified is less than 25% i mean one fourth of your contract price means no profit should be transferred to pnl account the entire notional profit is kept in reserve for contingencies in case if your work certified is 25% or more but less than 50% means there is a formula to calculate the how much of profit transfer to pnl account notional profit into 1 by 3 into cash received by work certified this is the second golden rule this second golden rule will come when your work certified is 25 percentage or more but less than 50 i mentioned the percentage 25 percentage to 49 percentage means the second rule will apply then the third golden rule is if your work certified is 50 percentage or more means the third rule is the formula is to calculate the profit transfer to pnl account notional profit in 2 by 3 into cash received by work certified so yeah out of this three golden rules any one rule will apply to calculate the profit to be transferred to pnl account out of the notional profit so what is the say for example our notional profit is 10000 as per our calculation 
out of 10,000 notional profit, 8,000 transferred to PNL account means the remaining 2,000 will be kept under reserve. So this is the way how we can do the calculation in the contract account for an incomplete contract. So I repeat once again, debit all expenses and credit as per the format that work in progress and what is the closing value of the plant after considering the depreciation and closing material. Then compare the total of both the sides. Which side is more means you can carry or calculate the balancing figure. In case debit side means notional profit, credit side means the loss. So what is the profit transfer to PNL account? How much of reserve we are going to keep under contract costing is all based on the three golden rules. I mentioned in yellow that is for completed contract. In case the contract is completed means the entire amount of profit has to be mentioned as profit only. That entire amount transferred to PNL account. So I repeat, in case the profit, if you are getting under incomplete contract means notional profit. In case a contract is complete means the entire amount of profit will be transferred to PNL account. So by this, you will come to know how to prepare the contract account for incomplete contract by applying this three rules. Next, we'll move on to the balance sheet format. How to prepare a balance sheet? For a contract account. As usual, we'll have liability side, asset side. On the liability side, in case if you have information capital means, sometimes you may ask you to prepare the balance sheet with the information available. That is called as balance sheet extract. Sometimes you may have all information to complete the balance sheet, but that means you need to tally the balance sheet. So, in case they are asking extract of balance sheet, means just show whatever items are available as per the question. In case if you have full information, means we need to end up the balance sheet by tallying both the sides. I mean the liability side as well as asset side. Capital, what is the capital? And next on the liability side is profit and loss account. How I will show the profit and loss account means whatever profit I got it in my incomplete, that is, that is what is that? Two profit and loss account I showed away. This amount, refer note number one, two PNL account, refer note number one. That amount I have to bring it over here, and then from that amount, I should be that the value of the material loss and value of the plant lost. Then get the balance from that balance. If you have the information, the problem any profit and sale of material means you need to add it and get the balance for the PNL account. And look at the problem is there any outstanding expenses? Means you need to show it on the liability side. In as usual manner. Then, if you have a creditors information, show the creditors. That is all about on the liability side. And we'll move on to the asset side. First, I showed here fixed assets. So, under fixed assets, closing plant. Closing plant already I finished calculating in my contract account. Look at that incomplete contract account. I calculate the value of the closing plant already. And this amount only I'm going to. Bring it over here as closing plan and look at the problem. Is there any other assets, fixed assets, plan and building? So I can bring it over here and consider what is the depreciation if it is given means consider depreciation, show the balance. Next is very important current assets. Under current assets, usually we'll show uh, the closing uh, stock and then uh, debtors, bank balance. Work in progress is also one of the current assets. So I showed here under the current assets what is the closing material. And next is work in progress. For the work in progress only, we need to do this adjustment. The adjustment format is work certified to add along the work uncertified and minus cash receipt, minus reserve, get the balance showing the outer column. And then this reserve is as per the note. And bank balance given, debt as is given means we need to show and tally the balance sheet. I think you are convenient with this format how to. Prepare the balance sheet. Next, I showed in this slide how to prepare a completed contract account. The previous thing is I uh, explained for incomplete contract. Sometimes they may ask you in the part B or part B to prepare a contract account for a completed contract. This is not a difficult one, it's the easiest one. The only difference is we need to show 
the contractee's account that is the contract price as per the agreement only on the credit side but other things are same debit the expenses whatever we incurred for carrying out the contract and credit what is the closing value of the plant and then closing materials whatever materials sent to store uh, and return to suppliers or transfer to other contracts and then the only thing is contract is the account contract price here we don't have the information about the work in progress i mean it's a in, it's a completed contract so there is no space here for showing the work in progress because it's a completed contract and take the total on both the sides whichever side is less you can show as profit in case debit side means it's a profit the balancing figure credit side means it's a loss this is the way how you can prepare the completed contract account and then in case sometime they may ask you uh, for part c problem prepare a contract account also this is the format cash receipt you need to show on the credit side and bring the cash receipt as a uh, carry down balance and show the carry down balance for the next thing as a drawdown balance so i think uh, through this video you came to know how to prepare the contract account for incomplete contract as well as completed contract and the balance sheet in next video i will explain one model problem along with the solution which covers all the details stay home stay safe thank you for watching this video